had some time to do some recordings um, while I was away. Thank you for having or gifting me some time without uh, too much critique, but I am back and Tuesdays is continues to be popular. So for today's practice, we'll be doing um, equalizing practice. So bringing the elements of uh, left and right and the hemispheres of the brain to balance. And it, I would call this also a very um, energizing yet creation of freedom in the body uh, practice. So as Iyengar wrote in his book, when we have freedom in the body, we have freedom in the mind and then ultimate freedom. And freedom is a word that continues to rise, um, I think, in our world, world right now as we navigate um, current changes and shifts in our own life. And this is an opportunity to just take 30 minutes for you to create some freedom in your body, to create some freedom in your mind, and to create an ultimate freedom of how you view and see what's occurring. And I know for myself, having to take time to really sit with um, decisions and choices. Uh, as you all know, I'm all about everything is a choice and this practice is a choice and you've shown up and you've chosen it. And in each part of the practice, you'll choose to keep going or you'll choose to stop and know that you're making the choice for you. And that's key. And every choice then also has a, an aspect or a, an element that if you choose A, you get B and C, or if you choose X, you get Y and Z. And these are all correlated and related. And it doesn't mean you can't change your mind. Always know that impermanence is a huge part of the human design. And if you choose to stop, you can also choose to start again. So allow that to come through in today's practice. So we'll just sit tall for a moment. Hands in your lap and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And a sighing breath out. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears as you draw in your next breath. And as you exhale or sigh, if it's needed to to release the excess physical tension. Allow that side to continue. As you inhale, shrug the shoulders again. Exhale, sigh. Inhale, shrug, purposeful tension. Exhale, sigh. Do one more here, slowly. Bring your palms to meet at your heart center. Taking this moment to acknowledge the land in which you practice from and the indigenous roots in which you sit, to bow your head in honor of the practice of yoga and its roots in India and pranayama. And any other intention or dedication you choose to make here, and know that your energy moves beyond your physicalness and where you sit here, but there is a mental and physical power and strength to the energy you emanate into the world. Take a gentle ohm here. You can join me or simply sit and listen. Inhale. As you release your hands back to your lap, just take a moment and scan the connection points of your seat and your feet, perhaps your legs to the floor, and developing a connection, a rootedness to the earth and rising from your spine straight up through the crown of your head, a little taller, 
like the plant grows into the freedom of the space above the soil. It's working hard to create deep roots in where it sits and where it stands to allow for freedom to move with the winds of change. We'll start with a Surya Vedana. We'll do this with Vishnu Mudra. So you can open the eyes if you need. Hold the first two fingers of your right hand down. And we'll create that little pincher claw towards the nose. And this will be an inhale through the right and an exhale through the left. If you at any time find this too energizing or too lifting, then pause as you need to. Your left hand can create the yana mudra, thumb and forefinger touch, palm down or palm open as you choose. Exhale fully, sealing the left nostril. Inhale right, five, four, three, two. Pause at the top, seal the right, exhale left for five, four, Three, two, one, seal the left, open the right, breathe in. Pause, seal the right, open the left and breathe out. Pause, seal the left, breathe in right. Seal the right, open the left, breathe out. Keep going. Remembering that Syria is the sun Vedana is the piercing. You're piercing through perhaps your own ideas, concepts, perspectives, and allowing there to be a light to expose all that's there to provide you the opportunity to choose. As you continue, deepen your breath, go as full as you can get on the right. And equalize that with an emptying exhale through the left. Do one more inhale right and exhale left. And when you've completed, 
you'll release your right hand back to your lap. Remembering that keeping the eyes closed and staying in that internal awareness is really key for pranayama and that potency that can come of developing that depth of connection to your mind and in turn to your body. And it may be a question of is the physical tension caused by the tension in the mind or is the mind tension caused from the physical tension in the body? A little bit of that chicken or egg question or cart or horse, which comes first. Now we'll take a moment and adjust our seat. We'll add a little hip opening here. So left leg out, right ankle on top of left for Agni Sambhasa, you can do single, We'll hold that left foot under. Try to make the shins as parallel or stacked as best you can. If you're feeling tight in your hips, a little block under your left knee can be helpful here. And we'll take the fingertips to the sides. You can also have one hand on your uh, low belly for capilla body. We'll do this first set um, through the nose. So sitting nice and tall, eyes closed. Exhale fully, relax the belly to your hand if it's there. Take a half breath in and begin. Three, two, one, exhale fully. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, walk the hands forward and fold in the direction of your folded legs. You can bring the fingertips around in front. Now we'll take three lion's breath here just to deepen that expression and also connect to the 12 cranial nerves. This is meant to um, not only create connection, but to open up uh, our way of thinking and of feeling. So if there's something standing in your way, this is a great way to release it, um, whether it's through your voice, through your throat, um, or simply through the tension in your face. So you'll pull back as you inhale. Stick out your tongue, cross your eyes or look up. One more, let it out. Take a moment, draw the chin slightly in, lean your heart forward and feel into the physical tension that you might have in your hips, in your low back, in your jaw, in your shoulders. Breathe steady in. And steady out. There's often a point in longer holds where we feel the need to move away from the discomfort. And if there's pain, 100% do that. It's simply a sensation that, oh, there's something that needs to, to move here. I always think there's something that needs to slide through like water. 
allow there to be space to breathe into that. Gradually walk your hands back up, lean back, stretch your legs out and switch to the other side. So left ankle on top of right knee, single sitting here, double it up if it's there. Lock under the far knee if you're feeling a little tight like me. And with your fingertips by your sides or maybe one hand to your belly, again, to remind your belly to relax. It is important in Kapla Bay. It's sharp and short, but it comes from that pulling in action. And that's really what creates. So we're not just forcing from here. We want to force from down here. So sitting tall, take a full breath in. Exhale, relax the belly to the hand. Half breath in, through the nose, tap of the body. Three, two, one, empty, breathe in fully. As you exhale, lean forward into the tension of that outer hip. Either fingertips ahead of you or by your sides. We'll take three lion's breath. Deep breath in. Tongue out, exhale. that again. Your freedom to choose. So as intensely as you choose. Take a moment as you breathe in. Lean forward a little further as you breathe out. There's all the tension from the jawline, from the shoulders. Clearing the tension from the hip. And there are times when we move into an asana posture like we are here with pranayama and we don't realize how much tension the physical body has. So as the freedom of the body is released, or the tension of the body is released, we create freedom. And as the freedom of the body appears, then the mind also becomes free. Deep in your breath, long ujjayi in. Steady breath out. As you walk your hands back up, you'll stretch your legs out. This time, take the legs nice and wide, flexing the toes to the sky. One hand just on each knee or shin or ankle, or you might even hold your toes if you've got that flexibility. This will be ujjayi tall, just a reset. And then exhale ujjayi over your single leg. And then rising on the inhale, eyes closed. Think of that plant or flower growing out of the earth. That there's a rootedness to your seat and a freedom to rise. 
and to bend and fold with the breeze of your winds of change through your breath of ujjayi. So slow and steady, there's no rush here. And gradually return to sitting tall, cross your legs. Take a moment. And from here, we'll take the strika for any clearing. We move slowly. Sometimes that's when things start to bubble to the surface. So from here, We'll do our Bastrika breathing with some rotation. And it's an inhale, left elbow forward, exhale, right elbow forward. And you can also just imagine like you're elbowing what you need to create your freedom out of your way. Who is it? What is it? And know that it's just a creation of a story in your mind, ultimately, that can be shifted, that can be changed. So if you're feeling really bound here, this is really key in it releasing the mid back. So starting on your inhale forward, exhale back through the nose. Pull the air in, press the air out. Be powerful with your choice, your decision. The length of your breath is up to you. Once you have a rhythm, stick with that rhythm. Three, two, and one. Exhale fully, sit tall, keep your eyes closed. You may feel the momentum of your physical body want to continue with rotation. Exhale to find center. Take a moment, observe your sensations. The physical body feeding the mind.
take a moment, switch the cross of your legs, catch the fronts of your knees. And the second round of the strika will be an inhale forward, exhale back, cat cow. So lots of tension can be bound in our spine. I always think their flexibility comes in our spine. If you think of a snake as it moves through the grass very freely, there's a lot of space to move. We wanna have that in our own body. And with eyes closed, begin on exhale. So take a full breath in. Exhale, round back. Allow there to be space to move. Lots of breath in, lots of breath out. You consider that all of movement resides in the brain, which is your CNS, your central nervous system. It speaks to your PNS, your peripheral nervous system which glides through the spine. So it speaks through the spinal cord out into the periphery, and the peripheral nervous system to your extremities. Allow there to be space for communication, space to hear, space to listen, to observe, and to choose. Speed up a little here. Let there build a subtle bit of expression through your breath. Exhale fully, sit tall, eyes closed. If you feel really ungrounded, you can lie down here. You can also place your palms into the earth. Focus on the deep inhalation, the smooth exhalation. The observation of the change in momentum when we pause and we continue to feel the movement in our body that there has been a, a shift, a momentum shift and bringing yourself back but maintaining that, that coursing energy in your body, that prana. You can switch the cross of your legs here. And to soothe the nervous system, we'll just do some really slow spinal um, or neck rolls. So for your cervical spine, chin to chest. Rolling your right ear to your right shoulder, leading from the chin really, really slowly, not to disrupt any past neck problem. But the breath of Ujjayi here, really prominent and really slow neck rolls. You may notice your jaw tightening. Can you keep the lips sealed, but soften the jaw within the mouth?
We'll do one more this direction. When you get to the bottom and no rush, you'll simply pause, keep the breath of Ujjayi and change direction. Let this be a soothing quality, ujjayi, clearing the throat, the neck, the jaw. Next time you exhale, the chin falls towards the center of the chest. Pause for a moment. Return the head to neutral. Take a deep breath in and a sigh. And go back to Vishnu Mudra, right hand, first two fingers. Bring you in Chandra Vedana. So an inhale through the left, exhale through the right, sealing the right nostril, left hand, thumb and forefinger, palm up for inspiration, palm down to ground. Empty the breath fully as you seal your right nostril and inhale for five, four, three, two. At the top, seal the left, open the right and breathe out. For five, four, three, two. Pause, seal the right in left. Pause, seal left, open right. Breathe out, relax the right shoulder as best you can. Feel right, breathe in left. See a left, breathe out right. Keep going at your own pace. The translation of Ch Chandra Vedana is moon piercing. Or the moon is a more gentle piercing. So we feel the radiance of the moon, that calm, but also the light that shines through a full moon, as you know, or any phase of the moon gives us a new view new perspective. Continue to clear the space.
The next time you exhale through the right, release your hand back to your lap. Just take a moment in observation. Now, if you've come just for the pranayama this morning, or if you're sticking around for some asana, go ahead and lie down for a moment, a minute. And your palms fall open or resting on your torso in a connection to the physicalness of your body. Perhaps observing the freedom of space in the physicalness of your body. <clears throat> now this short practice of physical asana will move through an opening or continue this opening of our physical body. Always choosing what's working for you, adjusting as you need to. Modifications are not a detriment. In fact, modifications can be far more opening to the physicalness of the body. So if you're sticking around, gradually bring one knee into your chest and the other. As you're departing here, thank you for spending this part of your day with me. As you catch the knees, do a couple circles, one direction. Just massaging your sacrum, the connection to the base of your spine to the floor. And then reverse the direction, a couple circles the other way. As you pause at the center, place your right foot on the floor and just cross your left knee. Sweep your arms nice and wide. We'll just do a simple short twist here. It can feel really good often after some pranayama to just rinse the spine. So let the knees fall over to your right side. You may even turn your cheek, your left cheek towards the left side of the room, the left side of your mat. Take a deep breath in. Softening of your back ribs as you exhale. And press into your right foot, swing the knees back to center, hips to center and switch the feet, left foot down, right leg over, slide your hips a little right as your knees fall left. And this connection you may feel all the way up through the right arm, especially the connection of the arm to the torso. Breathing into your mid, lower and upper back. Press into your left foot, bring your knees back up to the center and unwrap the legs, hug them in towards your chest. Now really gradually start to roll 
front to back. That doesn't feel good. You can roll to one side. So from your hips to your shoulders, chin stays in. Four, five, six rolls just to reinvigorate the spine. And then coming all the way up and over onto hands and knees. Coming into your tabletop position, your toes can tuck or point here, but spread your fingers nice and wide and just take three cat cows. As you inhale the full breath, shoulders draw back, chest comes up. As you exhale, tuck your tail like a wave through your whole body, let it round inward. Then inhale, lift the tail, articulate through the spine, lift the chest. Exhale, tuck under, round it out. Long, long breath. As you come back to tabletop, bring your thumbs together. So your hands are still nice and wide, but your thumbs touch. And bring your right foot around to the outside of your right pinky finger. So we want the freedom in our body. So a combination of our shoulders and our hips here. So as you soften your elbows, hinging forward ever so subtly, bringing the hips forward. Now spread your toes of your right foot in front that you can see a little bit lower where possible. Keep the head at neutral. So don't let the head dangle, but also don't jet the chin forward. You can hear when I do that, the strain it puts in the throat or the, the neck. Now straighten the arms, the elbows, pull your hips straight back, straighten your front leg and see if you can pull your right hip underneath you. It's like you're drawing your right hip further and further back. And you may feel this on the outer shin. You might feel it in the back of a hamstring. The arms are straight, but I want you to think now shoulders back and lift your chest towards your thumbs. So even just a it might not look like anything or it might not even feel like much changes, but energetically, as you look over your fingertips and pull your heart that way, you might feel a deepening of your stretch here. And if your hips really jetting out to the side, accommodate where you need to, maybe a bit more bend in the knee, pull your right hip back. And keep pulling the heart forward, start to bend the knee, lifting back into that setup and slide your right foot back into your tabletop. Bring the left foot around. And as you come forward, toes tucked or pointed. If you're working on stretching your feet, tuck those toes under. Now bend into your elbows, lean your heart forward and it may not feel like a very big movement, but there may be a very big sensation. Soften the shoulders. Notice if the jaw is clenching or tensing. Crown of the head reaching forward, heart moving over your fingertips. One more big breath here. As you straighten your elbows, pull your hips straight back. Now this might cause rounding initially in your spine. Go for a bit of rounding, just like the cat spine. Pull your left hip down and then pull your heart forward like you were trying to go back to cow. So if we were rounded into cat, we're pulling the heart forward and grip into your mat with your fingers. Add a little bit of tension to pull your shoulders back. Draw the chin in slightly, the crown of the head forward. Keep the breath moving. The thing to always remember is when we breathe deeply, our diaphragm does connect to our psoas and to our low back. When we have low back pain, think about how you're breathing. There's probably a limitation when our body's in a state of fear or anxiety, we shallow breathe and we don't really access the lower extremities or the lower muscles of the body. 
See if you can expand into your back ribs while pulling your shoulders back and softening your elbows. And it's getting intense, too intense, soften somewhere in a joint, whether it's your left knee, your right shoulder. And then come all the way forward and slide your left foot back. Come back into um, tabletop, but bring your hands one hand distance forward so your hips are now ahead of your knees. Take a full breath in, modified plank and lower to your belly, think forward and down. When you reach the bottom, flip the feet, press into the toes, lift into cobra, and then release down. Two more cobras like that, shoulders back. Imagine pulling, dragging your body forward, which is pulling your hands back. Press through your pinky toenails. Don't forget about the feet behind you, one more. Good. Then tuck your toes, press back and up and come into a downward dog. If you want to stand puppy dog, you can also do that. Let the forehead kiss the floor. Either way, your head is below your heart. Breathing a nice, long, steady breath of ujjayi. Now take your right leg up behind you, really stretch long, get spacious in the room that you're in, like you could touch every corner, every wall. Then bring your right knee through, step your right foot to your right thumb, lower your left knee down. Take your right arm to the sky, simple twist. Pull your heart forward and those hips down like you were in that tabletop lunge position. So it's like you're drawing the hips down and your heart up. Now bring your right hand inside your right foot. Now you could use a block, fingertips, knuckles, or palm here. Pause to tuck your right sitting bone under, left hand to your rib cage, or left arm to the sky. And again, think hips and heart moving forward towards your, the top edge of your mat, towards your right foot. Clearing and dissolving the tension in the hips. So if you're feeling like you're, you're gripping to hold here, where can you soften to expand, to create more space, take up more space within the hips, within the ribs, within the jaw. Now bring your left hand back down, reframe your front foot, lift your back knee and step back three-legged dog. Stretch, point the toes, try to touch the back wall. Flex the foot and then lower the right leg down. Take your left leg to the sky. Press into the front of the mat, get longer through your arms, longer through your torso as you breathe in. Try not to collapse your ribs towards the floor. If anything, puff up your back a little bit here. And then step your left foot to your left thumb. Right knee comes down, left arm to the sky. Now here is often where we can end up pulling back. So think of pulling your heart forward, almost like you're trying to drag your left heel towards the back edge of your mat. Spread your left toes. And gradually bring your left hand inside your left foot. Try to pull your heart forward. Hand can be on a block or onto fingertips or knuckles. Take a moment, catch your ribs. Tuck your left sitting bone underneath and take your right arm straight up. If it's hard on the shoulder here, keep the hand on the rib cage. 
Eyes can stay down for balance. Pull the heart forward. Bring the right hand all the way back down. Reframe your front foot, pick up your back knee, step back to three-legged dog. Point your toes as long as you can make that leg. Then flex the foot and lower it down. Let's go our modified flow here, high plank, inhale. Knees up or down, exhale, lower halfway or all the way. Up dog or cobra, shoulders back either way, feet engaged. Downward facing dog. Step your feet up your mat until you're about the middle. So your knees come down to the center and your toes tuck under. Now this may feel intense. So accommodate your knees, your feet. If you need a block or a cushion between your hips and heels, do that. Otherwise, sitting up and back on those tucked toes. As you're tall at center, take your right arm up, bring it around behind, and your pinky finger sort of slices into the nape of the neck and then pulls upward. Now, if the chin pushes in, equalize by pushing your head back into your hand so your chin is level. Take your left hand around behind onto your tail, right to your sacrum, nice and low, and pull your elbows back. Now, as you're here, I want you to focus on the breath in the middle between the two hands. Breathe into the space behind you. As you exhale, you're softening the ribs down and your shoulders down from your ears. There's a little bit of a nudge of that right pinky finger upward on the skull, but the skull pressing back into the hand, creating space for the neck and into the shoulder. If the feet start talking, pay attention, listen, adjust as you need to. You might either lean forward or you might sit up. Steady gaze or eyes closed. One more breath. Elbows back, elbows back. Release your arms. Give them a little bit of a shake out, rinse the wrists. And then come forward just enough to flip your feet. Give them a little tap out. And now you can either knees together, feet together, think ankles together also as you sit back. And if you have the space to sit here, this feels okay. If you want more intensity, you can always just lift the ankles, keep them close, but your toes still curl so you're on the toenail. Left arm comes up. Pinky finger right into the base of the, or the top of the neck, the base of the skull, pressing in. You might even tuck your chin for a moment and then create some space by pulling upward through that edge of your hand. Right hand on your tail, elbows pull back. Now it's common that as we pull the elbows back, there's levers in the whole body that might flare the ribs forward. So as you exhale, Think about pulling your front ribs in like there's a knitting together of your front body. If you need to adjust your feet, you went a little too aggressive too soon, you can always adjust. Breathe fully, either eyes closed or steady on one point. Head equally pressing the hand as hand presses up to the base of the skull. Picture space between every vertebra with every inhale opening up. 
elbows back, shoulders down. One more full breath cycle, pull the elbows back. And gradually relax the arms. Give your wrists a little shake out. Come off your feet, give them a little tap out. We'll come into a seated position. Feet flat at the top of the mat and roll all the way onto your back. Slide your feet in a little closer, touch your heels. So the long fingers touch the heels, making sure they're wide, but also straight. Press down through the elbows, tuck your shoulders, palms can face each other over your belly. Lift into a simple bridge here. Once in that lifted phase, think again about your inhale might flare your ribs up. Think of the exhale as settling the ribs, but lifting the hips, squeezing your backside, pulling your heels underneath you. You don't have to move the heels, but pull them towards your shoulders or your fingertips if you want to reach down. A little higher if you've got the space. Two more breaths. Think pressing the back of the skull into the floor like you did into the hand, lifting the chin off the chest. And let your palms fall open, lower upper back, middle back, tail touches down. Deep breath in. And a sigh. Stretch one leg, stretch the other. Rest your physical body. Take up space here. Let there be freedom to move your body a little wider than normal. Now soften your gaze, close your eyes if that feels okay. Relax your jaw. A big breath if needed to sigh. Feeling any last remnants. Feeling like a more open river flowing, shifting, changing, adjusting, choosing direction. Take a minute here. By all means, continue to lie here. 
stay still, stay quiet. If you're called to begin to shift or move, recognize if it's a need to escape the discomfort of stillness. Sometimes we find comfort in movement, to stay moving. And often our discomfort comes when we stop or slow down. Let there be a freedom to just observe how your mind, your body continue to shift here. When you choose to adjust to a seated position, do so at your own pace, in your own time. And wherever you are, placing your hands on your heart center either Anjali Mudra or just palm over palm, feeling the beat of your heart, connection to your physicalness. Continue to choose and know that your choices continue and continue and continue. Bow your head to your heart. Honor yourself for your time, your energy and your commitment. Take a breath in, let it go, namaste.